We've come to the time of our communion service, or of our service, where we celebrate the Lord's table. Um, and so today we're going to do that out of the book of Philippians. We'll be looking at uh, chapter 3 of that book. Um, and if you don't have a Bible, there are men here that would love to put one in your hands. So go ahead and raise your hand, and they'll pass one out. And then we'll look at Philippians chapter 3 together. If you don't own a Bible, this is yours to keep. It's our gift to you. We're studying Philippians in our small group, so I've spent a lot of time there in the last month. And although we're not this far along in our study together, as I was preparing for what I wanted to talk about this morning, this passage in chapter 3 came to mind, and specifically verse 3 of chapter 3. So let me read chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. We'll read that together, and then we'll talk about it. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me, and it is a safeguard for you. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of the false circumcision. For we are the true circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God, glory in Christ Jesus, and put no confidence in the flesh. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness which is in the law, found blameless." But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ Jesus. Let me pray. Lord God, what a sweet reminder this passage is, the truth of the gospel. Lord, that there is nothing we can do to save us. Lord, we look at Paul's example in the second half of this passage and see all of the things that he did. And he knows that none of those things saved him. But it was the work of you on the cross, Lord. As we look at this, help us to examine our own hearts. Help us to put away areas in our lives where we may cling to our own works for favor. And help us to look to you, trust in you, and love you because of what you did at the cross. Amen. So at the beginning of verse 3, he says, we are the true circumcision. What does Paul mean by this? He is contrasting verse 2, where he is referencing evil workers and a false circumcision. He was referencing a group of Jews that attempted to distort the gospel by adding the requirement of circumcision to faith in Christ as necessary for salvation. Their false way of salvation was evil, as it caused great com confusion to the true message of Christ. The Jerusalem Council repudiated their teachings and confirmed that true salvation was by faith in Christ alone. And we know that from Acts chapter 15. Yet these dedicated religious teachers persisted to follow Paul and create havoc among immature Christians with their Christ plus circumcision salvation message. So a reference to the true circumcision is basically saying we believe in a gospel that we are saved by grace through faith. Christ's death on the cross was sufficient. Paul then goes on to give three evidences of a confidence in salvation. He has confidence that the sheep at the church at Philippi are of the true circumcision, and he quickly gives them three places to put this confidence. The first one you can see there is worship in the Spirit of God. Christians are the spiritual ones who worship properly directed by God's spirit rather than relying on external rituals or rules. And then the second one is glory in Christ Jesus. Christians are actually ones that take pride, but not in anything they do. Christians boast in glory only in Christ, the good, obedient one who fulfilled the law. Satisfaction comes from recognizing that their hope is found in Christ alone not through meticulous conformity to the external demands of the Mosaic law. They have understood that Christ's sacrifice has fulfilled the law for them. 
And then the third one is they put no confidence in the flesh. This stands radically opposed to the false teachers who said Gentiles had to be circumcised to be acceptable to God. The Philippians and modern readers must make the choice, glory in Christ or in human religious achievement. Genuine believers have their complete hope or confidence in Christ's finished work on our behalf on the cross rather than anything done for the, by them for God. Trusting in anyone or anything besides the true Messiah is foolishness. Jonathan Edwards explains this concept by saying, all which men can do and all which they can suffer will not make up for the want of sincerity in the heart. Meaning no matter what we do, if our heart isn't directed at the one that went to the cross, then our aim is futile. Most of us here are not by default trying to work our way to salvation. However, this disposition is so ingrained in us, I bet we go there more than we want to admit. So Christian, I have a question for you to ponder as we take communion today. Where do you allow a works-based salvation to creep in? Maybe guilt over sin hinders your worship of Christ. Maybe you look to external motivation for holiness. Or on the flip side, do you take personal pride in your spiritual success. If that's the case for you, spend some time in prayer, confess that to God, and take communion on your own this morning. Now I want to talk to those of you that don't put your faith in God. There are many reasons that you could be here today, but I hope one of them, I hope the primary one, is to listen to these next few words. Christ's death on the cross was so much bigger than you can imagine. A perfect life, a truly sinless life, is the only way to work your way to heaven. So we can't do that. It is futile to think you could ever be good enough. So you need to worship Christ, the one that did that. Glory in his death on the cross and put no confidence in your own ability to be saved. We'd love to talk to you after the service. I'd love to talk to you after the service. Come find me. There's going to be people sitting over or standing over there that would love to talk to you. If you have any questions about what it means to put your faith in Christ, please ask somebody. But let the cup and the bread pass by this morning as this is a time for those who have dedicated their life to Christ. Men, come forward and serve us, and I'll come back and pray. <laughs>